three fundamentals about bishops that you can learn and apply today to improve your chess. That's what we're covering. Number one, in the opening, as white, the best squares for your light squared bishop are c4 and d3. Don't put your bishop on e2, that's too passive. For your dark squared bishop, g5 and f4, and preferably g5. It's just the more active square for the bishop, and it creates a pin with that queen on d8. Likewise for black, that's why black has e7 as the best square for his dark squared bishop, because it defends against that pin. And black is a bit of a tricky situation with the dark squared bishop in these d-pawn openings. So black will typically fianchetto that bishop onto b7. So if we take a look at it from black's perspective, this is a very typical setup for black in these d-pawn openings, a bishop on e7 and a bishop on b7, and a knight on d7 and a knight on f6. You cannot go wrong nine times out of ten as black with this type of a setup in a d-pawn opening, and as white with your bishops this way. Okay, number two, in the middle game. Bad bishops are what you want to avoid. And a bad bishop is one that is on the same color as its pawn structure, as your pawn structure. So in this case, white has a very bad bishop on d2. Its prospects are limited. It's essentially entombed by your own pawn structure. Black, on the other hand, Despite having a bad bishop, the bad bishop is outside of the pawn structure, and so it's a much more active piece. That's what you want to do. So beginners will make this mistake and block in their own bishops, and then, you know, you're taking away the square for the knight as well. It's not really good. In this case, how do you avoid it? You'd have to play something like c4, so that you can maybe move your bishop to this diagonal later in the game. Cool. That's bad bishops watch out don't end up with a bad bishop or get it out of your pawn chain likewise you can see each side will have a good bishop typically as well which is the bishop that's not inhibited by its own pawns and if you've watched this far here's a here's a bonus for the middle game if we get into a situation this is a common opening this is the sveshnikov sicilian but it happens in a lot of situations where you get an outpost for your knight on d5 how can you use your bishop to secure that outpost well, you simply take with your bishop on g5, the knight on f6, and once black captures, or if the rolls were reversed, if white captures, you end up with a much stronger outpost where you've eliminated the defender on f6, that knight on f6. Your knight now is very strong in the center of the board. Okay, number three, end games. Bishops love end games where there are pawns on both sides of the board. Knights do not, on the other hand. So think about that when you play your games. Um, knights essentially, you know, they're very slow maneuvering pieces. They take a long time to move from one end of the board to the other, whereas a bishop can support both its pawn on its queening process and stop the opponent's pawn at the same time. So that's the power of bishops. They're long-range pieces. Knights aren't. Keep that in mind for end games. And again, if you've watched this far, here's another bonus for end games. This is something you have to know, bread and butter. If you have an H pawn or an A pawn, the only way to win this is if your bishop can control the queening square. So in this case, white wins the game because white essentially prevents black's king from reaching and defending on the queening square. However, if the pawn was on a3 instead of h3. Black's king can hide in the corner and force a stalemate essentially because white will not be able to force the king out of the corner. One more bonus for all these loyal people wanting to learn about bishops. This is a quickfire one. Um, a bishop can dominate a knight on the edge of the board simply by, by being three squares across from it because it cuts out all of the knight's exit points. So keep this in mind in your games. If you ever see your opponent with a knight on the edge, think about how can I trap that knight, whether it's in an end game and then simply pick it up with the king or in a middle game. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about bishops, I've got a few other videos that I'm going to link on the end screens. Click on them to learn more. If you like this content, subscribe to the channel and share with your mates. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Peace out.